I want to begin working on this portfolio page now and I decided really all I want for this page is to have this grid that we have here for our assets. Now right now this shows our top assets and ideally on the portfolio page I would want this to show all of the assets. So let's see how the application is structured right now. Let me go into the asset summary. So inside here we have two columns. On the left we show the cash value and on the right we show that list view with the top assets that we want to use. So what I want to do is move this list view to a reusable component so that I can use it here and use it in my portfolio view. So to do that, what we're going to do is come into our controls and I'm going to add a new item here. This will just be another user control. And we're going to call this the asset listing. So let's just create that. And let me go back into that asset summary and we're just going to grab the entire list view cut that out and move it into our brand new asset listing and come back into our asset summary and we're going to add that asset listing control now we're going to have to come back here and change this up in fact right now let's move this to grid one and i think there's some other properties we want to add here so if we go up here we can get rid of grid row one now i'm going to pull the font size out of here and move that into the asset summary right here because I might not want all asset listing controls to have this font size of 14, so I'm going to define it out here. And that goes the same for this margin as well. So let's move that out. We are going to leave the border thickness because that pertains to the style of this list view. And I want that applied to all of these asset listing controls. And now if I run this, all is still good. Our assets are still being displayed and we've simply moved this to its own control. So now we're ready to work on the portfolio view model and then we'll work on the view. So on my portfolio view, I want to display a list of the user's assets. So in that case, I'm going to provide a property that's going to give the view a list of the assets. And these are going to be asset view models and we'll just call this assets. And this will be a read only property that gives back a collection of assets. Now this collection of assets is going to be stored as an observable collection. So we're going to do the same thing that we did in this asset summary view model. We're going to have this observable collection. In fact, let me just copy this and drop that in here, import that. And instead of top assets, this is just going to be simply assets. So on the asset summary view model, we took the top three assets, but in this case, we're going to display all of them. And this observable collection is what we are going to send back as the assets property to our view. So where are these assets going to come from? Well, they're actually going to come from our asset store. So a lot of this logic is going to be the same. So for now, I'm actually going to copy and paste a lot of this in here. So let's get our asset store. Let's get this. Let's just take everything and change it from there. Of course, we're going to have a little bit of duplication here. But in the future, I think I want to cut this out and move a lot of this into, say, an asset listing view model that can be shared between these two view models. But for now, I just want to test this out and get a basic implementation going. So let's update all of this. This is assets instead of top assets. And our reset assets logic is going to be a little bit different. So let me fix these names real quick. And we no longer have account balance as a property that's strictly on the asset summary view model. So actually the only difference here is that we're not going to be taking three, we're going to be taking all of them. And just looking at this, I feel like the duplication isn't that bad, but it's still something that I would want to clean up in the future. And now I think our view model is actually good. If we go into our app.xaml, we have this registered as a singleton, which should be good in our case. And we already have the create view model delegate set up, so we can use this view model. The next thing we need to do is head into our portfolio view and begin implementing this. So all we're going to do here is put our asset listing control in here. We're going to have to import that from the controls namespace like that. And now if I prefix this with controls, we get our asset listing. But we actually have a bit of a problem here. So we're using this asset listing and our data context is the portfolio view model. Now on this portfolio view model, we have an assets property. But if we go into the asset listing, our data context is looking for a top assets property. And we don't have that, we have assets. The top assets 
is on our asset summary view model. So there's two ways that we could fix this. We could have a dependency property on this asset listing. That would be an I enumerable and that would take a list of our assets and then inside of this asset listing control we would bind to this assets property right here. Let me import all this and set the owner class to the asset listing. So then what we would do in this portfolio view is we would set our assets to the assets on our portfolio view model and then in our asset summary we would set the assets to our top assets. And although that is a perfectly valid solution, instead what I actually want to do is create a new class here as an asset listing view model. And the reason I want to do this is because on this asset listing view model, I can have this property for the assets, and then my asset summary view model and my portfolio view model can use an asset listing view model instead. And then this asset listing view model can be set as the data context for this asset listing control. And then my binding just needs to be to the assets. Now that might be a little bit confusing, but we're gonna implement it and see it in action. And the big reason I'm choosing the asset listing view model approach rather than the dependency property approach I showed off is because I already wanted to create this asset listing view model in order to reduce the duplication between our asset summary and portfolio view models. So that said, let's start getting rid of some of this duplication. So our asset store is going to get moved into our asset listing view model. Real quick, let me make this a public class and make it inherit from our base view model. And we'll import this asset store. We're also going to copy over our assets observable collection and import that. And then we're also going to copy over our setup logic, our reset assets logic, and our asset store state changed event handler into this shared view model. And let's import link. And there we go. Looks pretty good. Let me update this constructor. And now in our portfolio view model, let me actually undo that. And what I'm going to do is just get rid of these methods because I want to keep my constructor. And actually, I'm just going to get rid of this anyways. But inside this constructor, what we're going to do is instantiate an asset listing view model and assign it to a property. So let's create that property. It's going to be our asset listing view model. And we'll just call it that. And it's going to be read only. And let's instantiate it down here. Of course, we could inject this asset listing view model into our dependency injection container. But for now, I'm just going to instantiate it right here. I don't want to make things unnecessarily complex for now. And let's pass in that asset store that is going to be coming from our DI container. And that is all this view model needs. So now in my portfolio view, I can set the data context of my asset listing to the asset listing view model that I have on my portfolio view model. So now in my asset listing view, the data context is going to be an asset listing view model and we have the assets property available that we can bind to. So we still need to update our asset summary view model to use our new asset listing view model. But for now, I want to test this out for the portfolio view model and see how it looks. All right, here we go. So we got our list view. This needs to be cleaned up a little bit. So I think what I want to do actually is set a max width of 1,000 because that's our default container width. So when we go full screen, it'll line up with our navigation stuff. And I think we have default layout stuff to find in the home view. Ideally, I would move this to like a layout component so I don't have to copy this margin and this max width. So we might look into that in the future. But we're going to move that margin over too. And there we go. So now we have this consistent layout. And this view looks pretty bland, honestly. Like it needs some work, but we're just going to leave it for now. I really just want to get some data onto the screen. And now if we go look at our top assets, this no longer works because we don't have an assets property on our asset summary view model. So let's fix that by using our brand new asset listing view model. So we can set that up right here. This is going to be our asset listing view model. Same thing as before, We're going to be a read only property. And we'll set that up in our constructor. So just a simple instantiation. 
So now I can get rid of this top assets collection, get rid of our reset assets method, because that's gonna get taken care of in our asset listing view model. And then I still need this event handler for the asset store because we need to raise an on property change for our account balance, but we no longer have our reset assets method. So now we've gotten rid of a lot of duplication. And now we need to update our asset summary control. So this data context needs to be our new asset listing view model. So our asset listing control can access our assets property. Whoops, and I got rid of my asset store assignment. So all I need to do is set the asset store field to our asset store that we get in the constructor and that should be fixed. All right, perfect, here we go. Our assets are now on display, but you might notice there's a bit of an issue and this is no longer showing the top three assets because our asset listing view model doesn't call the method to take only three asset view models. And the reason for that is because, well, on our portfolio view, we wanna show all of them. So how can we extend this to take only three on the asset summary view model, but take all of them on the portfolio view model? Well, there's multiple approaches we could take to this. We could move all of this into some kind of virtual method that subclasses could override and extend. So in that case, we would have an asset listing view model, and then we could have a subclass of this that would be, say, the top three asset listing view model. We could take in some kind of callback, so in this case, a func, with an input that is our list of asset view models and returns a list of asset view models. And we could call this, say, filter assets, assign that to a field real quick, and then down here, we could set our asset view models to the result of invoking filter assets with our current asset view models. So this callback method that we would pass in would take care of returning only the top three asset view models in the case of the asset summary view model. And the last approach we could do is instead of using a func to filter the assets, we could take in some kind of class that implements an interface with a function that would do similar functionality to this func that we have right here. But I think the simplest approach is just to leave this as a func for now. Let me rename this, put an underscore in front. And now in my asset summary view model, what I can do is pass in that func. So this func is gonna take in assets. And in our case, we're gonna return the assets, but only the top three. And now in our portfolio view model, we actually don't want to do anything to filter the assets. So what I'm going to do is provide a constructor that does not require this filter assets function. So in this case, it's just going to take the asset store and then it's going to call this constructor with our asset store, but with a default value for this func. And that's just going to be simply a func that takes in assets and just returns the assets, does nothing to them. And now our portfolio view model is happy. And here we go on the home page, top assets, we're only showing the top three. Click on the portfolio and we got more than three, we got all of them. Now I will say, I'm not sure if I'm the biggest fan of using a func here. I think an interface with a class might be a better approach because if we were to register this asset listing view model in dependency injection, then we would need to have this logic in our dependency injection container. And I don't think that's a good idea because I don't think you should really define logic in a dependency injection container. That should really be in your classes. So alternatively, this would take in, say an I assets filter, and then we could implement that interface with a top three assets filter. And then we could also implement that interface with say a do nothing assets filter. And by doing that, not only would it look nicer in the dependency injection container, but I think it would read better as well. So those are just some thoughts about some things I might implement in the future. But really the main goal of this episode was to move the asset listing into its own control and then use that control in our brand new portfolio view and also in our asset summary view. And along the way, we also cut down on some duplication by creating this asset listing view model.
So that is where I'm going to wrap things up. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comments section. But other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.